U.S. stocks fell across the board on Monday as investors kept an eye on a Democratic-led effort to impeach President Trump and ahead of earnings season. When the biggest U.S. banks begin reporting fourth-quarter results on Friday, some of the headlines could show profits plunged by as much as 40% from a year earlier before the pandemic struck. Twitter shares dropped Monday after it permanently suspended the account of U.S. President Donald Trump. These and more on TFT News. I'm Mike Wallace, and this is TFT News. Saudi Arabia's crown prince on Sunday unveiled plans to build a zero-carbon city at Neom, the first major construction project for the $500 billion flagship business zone, aimed at diversifying the economy of the world's largest oil exporter. It's hard to imagine a modern city with zero cars, zero streets, and zero carbon emissions. But Saudi Arabia's crown prince has unveiled plans to make it a reality. Today, as the chairman of the board of directors of NEOM, I present to you the line. What if everything you needed was always a five-minute walk away? The ultra-futuristic and sustainable city is the first major construction project at NEOM, a 10,000-plus square mile high-tech development in northwestern Saudi Arabia aimed at diversifying the economy of the world's largest oil exporter. What if we got rid of streets? What if we innovated in the public space? What if we built around nature instead of over it? According to the announcement, the city will be over 105 miles long, able to house 1 million residents, and it will be powered by 100% clean energy. The line is expected to contribute $48 billion to the kingdom's gross domestic product and create 380,000 jobs. You can fulfill your daily errands within just a five-minute walk and you can travel from one side of the city to the other in 20 minutes. With a 30% reduction in infrastructure costs, a 30% increase in the quality of products offered, and with 100% renewable energy, the line is a revolutionary project that puts the human first. The prince told reporters the city's infrastructure would cost between 100 and 200 billion dollars. To all of us. Construction is due to start in the first quarter of 2021. Twitter stock tumbled over 6% on Monday after its move to permanently suspend U.S. President Donald Trump's widely followed account spurred concern among investors over the future regulation of social networks. Shares of Twitter dropped 11% in early trading Monday, knocking more than $3 billion off its market value. Some investors dumped their shares after the social media company suspended President Donald Trump's popular account on Friday, citing the risk of further violence after he helped provoke a riot at the Capitol. Some Republicans cried foul. Traders pointed to signs that the social media shutout of Trump was further fueling calls to tighten regulation on big tech. European Union Commissioner Thierry Breton compared the storming of the Capitol to the global crackdown on terrorism after the 9-11 attacks, writing in Politico, the fact that a CEO can pull the plug on POTUS's loudspeaker without any checks and balances is perplexing. Other tech giants such as Facebook, Google, Apple, and Amazon have also taken their strongest actions against Trump to limit his reach. Their shares also declined Monday, but not by as much as Twitter's. Trump had more than 88 million followers on Twitter, and analysts say many of those eyeballs will go away if Trump is permanently banned. Investors will also keep an eye on downtown San Francisco Monday, amid reports that local police were bracing for a possible protest by pro-Trump supporters outside Twitter's headquarters. Facebook chief operating officer Sheryl Sandberg said the social media giant has no plans to lift its indefinite ban on U.S. President Donald Trump's accounts for violating its policies. Even a president is not above uh, the policies we have. 
Facebook Chief Operating Officer Sheryl Sandberg on Monday said the world's largest social media network has no plans to lift its ban on the accounts of U.S. President Donald Trump for violating its policies against inciting violence. Speaking at the Reuters Next conference, Sandberg said she was glad Facebook had taken the action. Our ban's indefinite. We've said at least through the transition, but we have no plans to let we have no plans to lift it. Facebook's ban came as tech giants scrambled to crack down on Trump's baseless claims about election fraud. Amid an unprecedented attack on Congress in Washington last week, moments after Trump's rally outside the White House. We will never concede. Violent rhetoric on social media platforms, including Facebook, ramped up in recent weeks as groups planned for the rallies, according to researchers and public postings. So why did we do it? We have clearly established principles that say you cannot call for violence in this moment. We took down those posts that we thought might be calling for violence or were calling for violence immediately. But in this moment, the risk to our democracy was too big that we felt we had to take the unprecedented step of what is an indefinite ban. And I'm glad we did. Facebook executives have long taken a light touch to policing speech posted by politicians, maintaining that people have a right to see statements from their leaders. The company backed down somewhat on that position and started applying labels to the president's posts after facing a backlash this past summer, including an advertiser boycott when it declined to act against Trump's incendiary rhetoric around anti-racism protests throughout the U.S. Sandberg also denied reports she had been sidelined as CEO Mark Zuckerberg took a more active role in content policy and government relations, her traditional areas of responsibility, casting aside rumors of her reduced role as corporate drama. Asked about the future for herself and Zuckerberg at Facebook, Sandberg said both were staying put in their current roles. When the biggest U.S. banks begin reporting fourth quarter results on Friday, some of the headlines could show profits plunged by as much as 40% from a year earlier before the pandemic struck. Get set for mostly dismal results when the biggest American banks begin reporting their fourth quarter earnings Friday. Analysts anticipate profits to plunge 42% at Citigroup, 39% at Wells Fargo, and 33% at Bank of America. Of the big banks, only J.P. Morgan Chase is expected to see a moderate drop of 5%. Hurting the traditional lenders, falling interest rates due to the pandemic. Analysts say that produced a record decline in the margin between what they charge and what they pay for money. Banks also had to set aside more than $65 billion for expected loan losses. But the booming capital markets business should boost results at the traditional investment banks. Profits are expected to rise 1% at Morgan Stanley and 43% at Goldman Sachs. The fourth quarter may prove to be the low for the sector. Refinitiv's IBIS estimates banks' profits could more than double in the first and second quarters of this year as vaccines get distributed and the blue wave in Washington delivers more economic stimulus. And in anticipation of that, investors have driven bank stocks up 35% since early November. Wall Street's main indexes closed lower on Monday as investors took some profits after last week's records while they waited for earnings season to begin and eyed events in Washington with trepidation. Modest losses for the stock market on Monday as Congress moves ahead with efforts to impeach President Donald Trump and investors prepare for the start of earnings season. The Dow fell 89 points, the S&P 500 lost 25, the Nasdaq tumbled 165. Interest rates on U.S. government debt rose once again, hitting highs not seen since March. Mark Okada, CEO of Sycamore Tree Capital Partners, expects to see more volatility across all investments. I frankly am glad to see a day of pullback a little bit. The, the, the huge move we saw last week is, is something that I really wouldn't expect to see given the historic sort of um, very negative uh, actions uh, across our government, across our, our economy. Um, and, and I think um, it's, it's good to see a little bit of, of capital coming off the, um, and, and, and gains being taken 
maybe this market getting a little bit better, uh, lower in, in valuation. That certainly was the case when it came to Bitcoin. It took a nasty tumble. The world's biggest cryptocurrency fell more than 11 percent, a plunge of $4,300 on Monday after hitting record highs the prior week. Some investors worry that after doubling in price since early December, the price of the notoriously volatile digital currency has become too bubble-like. As for individual stocks, the focus was on tech. Pro-Trump protesters demonstrated outside of Twitter and the social media site permanently suspended the president's account. Facebook, Alphabet-owned Google, and Apple also took their strongest actions yet to limit Trump's social media reach after he instigated last week's Capitol riots. Shares of Twitter fell 6%. Tesla had its first down day since December 22nd, dropping nearly 8% in the stock's worst daily performance since October. Investors booked profits after Tesla shares rose more than sevenfold last year. The Trump administration on Monday announced it was returning Cuba to the U.S. list of state sponsors of terrorism, a move that could complicate any efforts by the incoming Biden administration to revive Obama-era detente with Havana. The Trump administration announced Monday that it was returning Cuba to the U.S. list of state sponsors of terrorism, a move that could complicate any efforts by the incoming Biden administration to revive Obama-era easing of strained relations with Havana. Just nine days before President Donald Trump leaves office, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Cuba was being blacklisted for, quote, repeatedly providing support for acts of international terrorism by harboring U.S. fugitives and Colombian rebel leaders. Cuba's security support for Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro was also cited by Pompeo as another reason for the blacklist. Pompeo said in a statement, quote, With this action, we will once again hold Cuba's government accountable and send a clear message. The Castro regime must end its support for international terrorism and subversion of U.S. justice. In 2015, former U.S. President Barack Obama formally removed Cuba from the terrorism list to help restore diplomatic ties between the two countries. Returning Cuba to the list rolls back that effort and would require lengthy legal deliberations for President-elect Joe Biden to reverse the move. The terrorism designation carries a prohibition on U.S. economic aid and a ban on U.S. arms exports, among other restrictions. Those are the latest from around the world. I'm Mike Wallace, and this is TFT News.